Romans chapter 8 verse 14. For as many as are led by the Spirit of God, these are sons and daughters of God. Let me ask you a question. What made David, David? What made Moses, Moses? You read through Hebrews chapter 11, the hall of fame of faith. What made great men out of those weak men? What made Abraham, Abraham? What was it that made Gideon, Gideon, a mighty warrior? What made these people great was not their innate greatness. The Bible tells us about the weakness of men because it's not innate greatness inside those men or women. Somebody, would you lift your hand and say, it's the great God that they encountered. I hope you hear me. It's the great God they encountered. What do we need in the church today? What do we need in this generation? We need more than nice religious messages. We need more than inspirational talks. We need more than three points in a poem. We need more than 15, 20 minute sermonettes that have been producing Christianettes for too long. We've got all of these things, but in the midst of having all of these things, our society isn't better. Do you know what the statistics say? That right now, only 16% of my generation, only a little less than 16% of this generation right here on the front row are born again Christians who believe the Bible and, and are following Jesus Christ. If we don't have a revival, if we don't have an awakening, if we don't see something change in America, the next generation, my little girl's generation, it'll only be 4%. I refuse to let that happen on my watch. I refuse to let my little girl grow up and just be a tiny minority in the United States of America. I believe there's a revival. And what we need in the church more than anything else, we need genuine, true encounters with God. A true encounter with Jesus will mark your life forever. And a true encounter with God will ruin you for anything less. What was it that separated David from Saul? He doesn't ask God to keep the king. He doesn't ask God to let him keep the crown. He doesn't ask God to let him keep the house. He doesn't ask God to let him keep the money or the fame. He doesn't pray, God, spare my reputation and keep this quiet. Oh, no, he doesn't care about those things, really. All he says is, whatever you take from me, whatever you do to me, I've sinned against you, and against you only have I sinned. And then he said, but God, please, don't cast me away from your presence. He said, Lord, there's one thing I want more than life itself and that's your presence. We cannot afford to be satisfied with church services that are absence of the presence of God. We can't be satisfied with entertainment that evokes emotion. We can't be satisfied with polished speeches that make us feel good. What made Moses Moses? What made David David? It was an encounter with the living God. We are not going to be satisfied with church as usual. We've got to be a house that above everything else pursues the presence of God.